This LOS is describe major categories of equity valuation models. Major categories of equity valuation models. So here we're going to look at four major categories. The first is the present value models, synonym discounted cash flow models. So you've got the dividend discount model and the free cash flow to equity model. And present value models estimate value as the present value of expected future benefits. And don't worry, this LOS is just really the definitions. We're going to see a lot more on dividend discount model, free cash flow to equity model uh, later on. Uh, the next uh, second major category of equity valuation models is the multiplier models, synonym market multiple models. So some examples here are price to earnings, price to sales, price to book, and price to cash flow. Multiplier models estimate intrinsic value based on a multiple of some fundamental variable, okay? Third major category is enterprise value, EV. EV multiples have the form of enterprise value divided by the value of a fundamental variable. And finally, the fourth major category of equity valuation models is asset-based models. And asset-based valuation models estimate value based on the estimated values of assets and liabilities. I put that in red. Just note that it's the estimated market value of the company assets minus the liabilities. And that makes sense. If you want to come up with a valuation of a company, uh, you're not going to look at the book values. For example, if they're using U.S. GAAP and there's a lot of land on the balance sheet and that was at historical cost, then you wouldn't come up with a valuation based on book value. So that's fairly common sense, but I just wanted to put that in bold and red, is that with an asset-based valuation model, you're looking at the estimated market value of the company's assets minus the liabilities. So the choice of the model will depend upon the availability of information to input into the model and the analyst confidence in both the information and the appropriate, uh, appropriateness of the model. And uh, one last thing to point out really is that you'll often see a valuation that uses a combination of uh, one or more uh, valuation models and gives each model a weighted average, uh, a weighting, and then come up with a weighted average in terms of a target, uh, 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 you know, intrinsic value target valuation. So we're just going to do a couple uh, quick practice questions. An analyst is estimating the intrinsic value of a new company. The analyst has one year of financial statements for the company and has calculated the average values of a variety of price multiples for the industry in which the company operates. The analyst plans to use at least one model from each of the three categories of valuation models. The analyst is least likely to rely on the estimate from A, the multiplier model, B, the present value models, or C, the asset-based valuation models? This is a good question with regards to the appropriateness of different models. So B is correct because the company only has one year of data available. The analyst is least likely to be confident in the inputs for a present value model. The values on the balance sheet, even before adjustment, are likely to be close to market values because the assets are all relatively new. And the multiplier models are based on average multiples from the industry. So if the company is operating close to industry standards, they would be uh, reliable. Another quick practice question. Based on a company's earnings per share of €1.35, an analyst estimates the intrinsic value of a security to be €16.60. Which type of model is the analyst most likely using to estimate the intrinsic value? A, multiplier model. B, present value model, or C, asset-based valuation model? Okay, a very easy question. A is correct. The analyst is using a multiplier model based on the PE model, and th uh, PE multiple used was 1660 divided by 1.35, and that equals 12.3, okay? This question should be fairly easy. In asset-based valuation models, the intrinsic value of a common share of stock is based on A, estimated market value of the company's assets, B, estimated market value of the company's asset plus liabilities, or C, estimated market value of the company's assets minus liabilities. Okay, assets equals liabilities plus equity, asset minus liabilities equals equity, and equity is uh, where we find the common shares. So C is correct, asset-based valuation models calculate the intrinsic value of equity by subtracting liabilities from the market value of the assets. Fairly easy question. Another quick practice question. Which of the following is most likely used in a present value model? A, enterprise value. B, price to free cash flow. Or C, 
free cash flow to equity? Again, all these questions are fairly easy. It's like a nice warm up before we jump into some uh, calculations later on. So C is correct. Free cash flow to equity can be used in a form of present value or discounted cash flow model. Both enterprise value and price to free cash flow are forms of multiplier models. Another quick question. Book value is least likely to be considered when using A, a multiplier model, B, an asset-based valuation model, or C, a present value model. C is correct. Multiplier valuation models in the form of price to book, you'd be using book value, obviously. And asset-based valuation models in the form of adjustments to book value, use book value. They do use book value, and sometimes you adjust it. Whereas present value models typically discount future expended cash flows. So book value is least likely to be considered when using a present value model. So two more questions to finish this LOS. An analyst is attempting to calculate the intrinsic value of a company and has gathered the following company data, EBITDA, total market value, and market value of cash and short-term investments, liabilities, and preferred shares. The analyst is least likely to use A, a multiplier model, B, a discounted cash flow model, or C, an asset-based valuation model. B is correct because we're looking for the least likely here. That's important. That's a false. Uh, so to use a discounted cash flow model, the analyst will require free cash flow to equity or dividend data. Neither of those are mentioned. In addition, the analyst will need data to calculate an appropriate discount rate. So the only thing with this uh, question is always look for the least likely or the most likely, turn it into a true or false. And the false here is B, the discounted cash flow model, least likely to use that. It's not mentioning any free cash flow to equity or dividend data in the question. And one last practice question to finish this LOS. An analyst who bases the calculation of intrinsic value on dividend paying capacity rather than expected dividends will most likely use A, the dividend discount model, B, free cash flow to equity model, or C, cash flow from operations model. Okay, that's a nice question to end on. A little bit tricky, but don't worry, we're going to see more of this in the future. Sometimes I like to put in a question uh, a little bit early in the process so it catches your attention. And this is a really important point that uh, when we're looking at dividend paying capacity, we're looking at the free cash flow to equity model because that's telling us about the capacity of the company to pay. And when we're looking at the expected dividend, that's the dividend discount model. So when we're talking about D1, over uh, R minus G or K minus G, if we're using the Gordon growth, P naught equals D1 over K minus G, that's the expected dividend, okay? But when we use the free cash flow to equity, what we're talking about is the capacity. That word capacity is so important, okay? So B is correct to use a dividend discount cash flow model. The analysts require free cash flow to equity or dividend data. In addition, the analyst will need uh, data to calculate an appropriate discount rate. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.